Folger over Cordier, you're welcome indeed to another edition of the program. As always, we'll be heading over to Manchester to join Martin Logan, who's out and about once again with the Irish community right across the UK. This week, we're at the Ireland West Airport for a big community event. It's the Kelly Kilmovey annual magazine launch. And there's always a tremendous turnout for this event. And there's going to be some great entertainment with none other than Sandy Kelly, Father James McDonough, uh, the local parish priest is even going to sing a song. So stay with us, you're going to enjoy the show. And we're all set here for another launch of the Kilkelly Kilmoveen Annual Magazine. Oh, thanks Henry for being here tonight. It's the 30th edition of the Kilkelly Kilmoveen Parish Magazine. We have a great night, uh, great night ahead of us. We have Sandy Kelly. Everybody knows Sandy Kelly, a wonderful, wonderful lady. And we've got Father James McDonough here tonight. And of course, we have our MC on the night, which is Eunice Morn. We have got a great lineup of local musicians as well. And of course, our children's competitions and the usual what happens, plenty of tea, free cake and a good evening ahead. We're queuing up outside to it's great, it's absolutely fantastic. We're all so excited yeah. tonight, so we are. I think it's going to be the best edition ever and the best launch ever. So I'm really looking great. forward to a fantastic time. So is everybody here. Uh, Mary Therese, you were very involved as well. You're on the committee. That's now, right. there's a lot of features in the magazine. I've seen one of them there. St. Patrick's Day, first ever St. Patrick's Day parade this year. Yeah, that's right. And about 2,000 people lined the streets to watch the parade. It was such a lovely, fine evening. And there was a huge lot of floats. And it was very good altogether. There never was anything like St. Kelly before, you know, so I hope it's an annual event. But for a small area, there's so much happening, isn't there, throughout the year? Yeah, it's great altogether. And so many people have put stories together for this magazine. Yeah. Stories, poems and everything, you know, it's yeah. very good altogether. It's getting better every year. Yeah. We think this is the best one. Great, OK. <laughs> Now, of course, let's look at the children of the parish as well. They're well featured in the magazine, aren't they? Yeah, they are indeed, Henry. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, we organise uh, a kids art competition uh, every year. So we involve the three schools in the parish. That's Kilkelly, uh, Tavron and Kilmavie. And uh, we enjoy that. We enjoy having the kids involved in the parish. And we organise the ice cream van as a treat for taking part in the competition. And you, you have something for the kids here tonight as well? Uh, yeah, we're presenting the kids with their prizes tonight and we have a special guest, two special guests Ooh. presenting the prizes tonight for the kids. Right. There's one other lady, I just want to say hello to because she's part of the committee but she's very, very shy <laughs> but i, I got to have a word with her anyway. Um, a, a big occasion this, you put a lot of work into it as well along with the committee. Well we do, we put a lot of hours in but you know it's all, it's all worth it, it's our little contribution to community life so. When, when do you actually start getting ready for this magazine? I suppose we start in April or May, maybe some that sort of time we start off, you know, at the, the early stages and then it ramps up as the year goes on then, you know. This means an awful lot for the diaspora as well, doesn't it, this magazine? I think so, yeah, yeah. You, you'd meet people that come, you know, in the summer or whatever and, and they'll have kept up to date with what's going on because they have got the magazine from the relation or something during the year, so. Well, well done to all the committee here, fantastic job and we're looking forward to a great night. Sandy, lovely to have you at Thank Ireland you. West Airport. Thank you for a well, change. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you're obviously, I see you're no stranger to this. Uh, no, I use this airport as much as I can because, of course, I live in Strand Hill, which is only down the road. So it's very, but I must tell you something funny. When I got here today, I'm just back from a tour of Scotland on Friday. And uh, to find out that there are flights, there are flights from here every day to Edinburgh. But I drove all the way to Belfast to get a flight and a flight back. So I won't That's do that again. Is. I know, gee, I won't oh, yeah. do that again. But it's wonderful to be here at this launch. It's, it's a wonderful idea, this magazine. And it's uh, very high quality, isn't it? It's fantastic, yeah. yeah. And, and you're going to have a big crowd tonight, Sandy. People come Sandy. from the whole parish of Kilmovey and yeah. Kilkelly yes. to be here for the official launch. And having you here as well, you're uh, going to be I'm delighted. delighted to be asked. I was absolutely mm -hmm. delighted. And I think actually you might have put my name forward. <laughs> and I appreciate that. There'll be, a, there'll be a wee glass of wine in that for you. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to meeting everybody. I think people are going to be arriving in soon. So, But I think this, going back to the magazine, it's a lovely idea. And it's, isn't it a great platform uh, for the parish, all the people in the parish to get together and 
to commemorate all the different achievements and markers in their lives, you know, weddings, birthdays. I think it's great. And uh, what will you be performing tonight? Is something like this now, obviously, you have to think a lot about to see what well, you're going to do. Believe it or not, something yeah. like this, although it's, not, it's relaxed and everything, I have to really think about it more because uh, if I'm going on the stage to do my show, that runs as it runs, and I've done it so many times. Where something like this is a little bit different. Although I get asked, you know, more and more, I suppose, as I get older, to do stuff like this, you know. Um, probably have to concentrate, concentrate a little bit more. And I had to go through all the notes of the book to make sure I was in the right county. And then I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> but, yeah, it's different. But it's good. Different is good, isn't it? Well, as you come close to the end of this year now and uh, looking at 2020 now, Sandy, yeah. uh, how's, how's business in general for you? I've been very busy. Um, as you know, sadly, my sister Barbara passed away tragically this time last year. So I took it upon myself. I took six months off uh, because we were devastated, of course. Um, and since I've gone back to work, I've been working nonstop. Um, I'm, off, I'm working every day this week. And then Saturday, I'm off to America for three weeks. Um, and the last week of that, I'll be finishing my first album in 25 years. Wow. I haven't, isn't it a miracle I'm still working? Yeah, yeah. I haven't recorded a song in 25 years. And what kind of material will be on that? It's when will it be out? Country. It'll be out, I'm writing a book. Um, that was delayed as well because of Barbara passing away. And I'm writing a book. So this time next year, the book and the CD will be out. You, you know, to coincide. One sort of supports the other in a way, you know. It, the songs... I suppose the songs represent different times in my life, um, starting on the Fit Up Road show as a child to where I am now, you know. Um, and it's, you know, something I've been meaning to do for a long time. The songs are reflective of, of that story. Some of them are quite sad, but some happy songs too. Well, look, enjoy the evening here, Sandy. Oh, I know you. They'll, they'll be queuing up to get photographs here with the lovely people oh, here, God. and you'll have a fantastic night. I'm really looking forward to it, Henry, and it's lovely to see you too. You too. Thank you. It's a lesson too late for the learning, made of sand, made of sand. In the wake of a dam, my heart is yearning. In your hand, in your hand Are you going away with no word of farewell? Will there be not a trace left behind? I should have loved you better, didn't mean to be unkind You know that was the last thing on my mind Sounding good you're getting warmed up now. Well, there's plenty of reason for going. This I know. This I know. For the leaves, they are steadily growing. Please don't go. Please don't go. Are you ready to sing? Are you going away with no words? Farewell, will there be not a trace left behind? I should have loved you better, didn't mean to be unkind. You know that was the last thing on my mind. Fair play to the committee and the organisers who have uh, put so much work into it tonight and into, into the booklet over the years and I believe it's always been a great success and we can see it from the crowd coming in now again tonight. Obviously you will be performing one of those great tunes that you're always requested on radio, The Waves of Kilkee. But I would say everybody in the building knows it and it, it's just one of those tunes that had took off, isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing. It has become very popular in the last last while. It's a, it's a nice air. It's a, it's a lovely piece of music, all right. So, yeah, I'd like to thank Midwest Radio for doing all they can to promote it as well and uh, it's, uh, it's been, been great. Lovely piece of music, yeah, yeah. And are you looking forward to performing here this oh, evening? I yeah, I am. It's a, it's a nice uh, kind, of, kind of a setting. Uh, it's a first time for me, so I'm quite happy happy to do that.
to say Carmel Williams and her team, they do a tremendous job. And Henry, you know, when you look around here tonight, the crowd is here, everybody is in very good form. And I suppose, you know, when you look at this Kilkelly, Kilmore V magazine, it's history because it'll be there forever. People will come back in years to come. They will look at it and they'll say, this is what was going on 100 years ago. They'll be looking at photographs and in 20, 30 and 40 year time, they'll be trying to identify who actually was there. It's a great occasion, a great night, and everybody is in very good form. And these are kind of events you like to see coming from your Department of Rural Affairs, that rural Ireland is alive and well and doing things like that. Well, that's right. My department is the Department of the Rural, the Community, the Development. And the community aspect of it is the most important part of it. And that's what's happening here tonight, community. People come in to support one another, people here to help one another. And you can see in this community all the things that took place in the last 12 months. Now, Henry, a very short 12 months. Only 12 months ago we were here before, and it just passes like that. But people are here tonight. They're in good form. We have a great community. We have great community spirit in this country. And there's one thing about Irish people. We have a community. And when people need that community, they're there for them, like tonight. And it's just great to see everything being recorded, what's happening. I know we have video, we have Facebook and everything else, but it's always great to see the written word. And even your own program, Henry, it's great to see it. And now may it last. And it's great to see that these programs will be, you know, people get, can get them online now all over the world, which is fantastic. I was born 87 years ago. And I was the second youngest of a family of five. I'm the last one left of the five. My sister was the last that died in England three years ago. And we had a happy childhood. We didn't have much to spare, but we never were hungry. My father went to England for six months of the year to earn money to send home to rear us at home. And my mother had to look after everything on the farm. And we helped out, of course. We went to Shamber School. That was about a mile away from us. And did you have to walk to school? We had to walk to school, no road, through the fields. Looking at Kilkelly now, what, what are your thoughts on Kilkelly today? Well, the population isn't as big around Kilkelly as it was in my time. There was all big families that time. Now there's one, two in big houses, whereas when they were rare big families, they had only two bedrooms and the kitchen. And in my time, we didn't have electricity until 19, 19 uh, I got married in 1954. 1956, we got electricity. There was no run of water in any of the country houses. If you had a well, you had the water for the team, and we had a river running along the house, and that was used for the house for washing clothes and washing dishes and everything else. Do you get the Kilkelly Kilmaville magazine every year? Every year. I wouldn't miss it for anything. I come down here every year to get it, and I used to even send it to my sister in England. She loved to get it and to find out what was happening around Kilkelly. So you still kept very busy and you know everything that's going on in Kilkelly? Oh, I do. And I go out. My daughter, Rosalie, brings me to Kilkelly for my pension every Saturday. And I go to Mass every Sunday. And we have such a beautiful priest, Father Sherlock. He has a joke or a song for us every Sunday. He is outstanding. So it's geographically a big parish. We go from here in Kilkelly over near enough to Balladrain, uh, four churches in it, as you know, uh, Kilmavie Parish Church. Then we have Glen, uh, Kilkelly, and Orler. So four churches, one priest. We used to have two, but I'm afraid the cutbacks kicked in. And uh, so it's it's a good parish, so great life in it. Uh, decent people, easy to be with. Ten years here now, so haven't fallen out with anyone yet, thank God. So yeah. And how important is an evening like this and the launch of a magazine for the people of the parish? I see it as very important. I think the, I think the written word is a great thing. And to be able to turn through pages in an age when we, myself included, are on screens and tablets and all that, there's something lovely about the, the turning of a page of a book. And, and I think somebody mentioned earlier the idea of people in other countries away from home receiving that and looking through it so in that regard i see it's very important it, it records the the history of of the year for us 
and 13 years of history now. This is the, the 13th edition. So in many ways, it's, it's a crucial uh, cog, I think, in the wheel of communication in the parish. I have to ask you, of course, did you learn the song Kilkelly, Ireland? when you were moving to the parish here? <laughs> no, I must say it's a song I've loved for years. I really did. And in fact, uh, James McDonough, who was performing here tonight, James is probably my best friend in, in priesthood and in life, maybe, truth be told. And uh, James would have said to me when I was moving to Kim you're long enough singing about it, it's time you were there for a while. So no, it's a song I love. It's a tremendous story. I, I do a bit of retreat work, and it's a song I would use at retreats all over the country, insofar as I am all over the country. And all of us are just the same response. People are just moved by it, that idea of keeping the family together and keeping the channels open. And again, that's what the magazine is doing. Uh, you know, those letters that went all those years ago are now been sent in the, within the covers of a magazine. So it's a great story and I love it. Michael has built himself a fine house and Bridget's daughters have grown. Thank you for sending your Family picture, they're lovely young women and men. You say that he might even come for a visit. What joy to see you again. Kill Kelly, Ireland, 18 and 92. My dear brother John. I'm sorry I didn't right sooner to tell you that father passed on he was living with bridget she said he was cheerful and healthy right down to the end you should have seen him play with the grandchildren of pat mcnamara your friend we buried him alongside of mother down at the Kilkelly churchyard. He was a strong and a feisty old man, considering his life was so hard. And it's funny the way he kept talking about you. He called for you at the end. Why don't you think about coming to visit? We'd all love to see you again. Yes, why don't you think about coming to visit? We'd all love to see you again. You've written an article about potato picking uh, in the magazine this year. Yes, uh, there's been a long tradition for many years of people from this part of Mayo, East Mayo, going to England to pick potatoes. Now, this is, uh, this is in the past, obviously. Uh, it started off, I suppose, for men from this locality would go to England, work with the farmers, and every year there'd be a gang going into the to potato picking, which mainly was concentrated in the East Coast, we'd say South Yorkshire or North Lincolnshire. And they, when they got there, they went to a, the, the main town in the area was a town called Scunthorpe. And the guy would meet there, and then the, the gangs, there were different gangs went to different farmers. And there was always a the, the conditions that they'd live in in the, in, in, in the farm was pretty primitive. They wouldn't comply with health and safety regulations nowadays. And generally speaking, there was about six men in a gang. And they, they lived in little, depending on your look, it could be very uh, primitive and bare, like a shed or you literally sleep on straw or it could be uh, a bit more luxurious. You might have a, a, a tap with cold water, but certainly toilets and bathrooms were non-existent. So uh, nowadays, I'm sure if the young fellows were told they had to live in those conditions with no showers and so on, they'd find it very difficult to comprehend. Well, uh, we wish you well and congratulations on the article. I'm sure a lot of people find it very interesting reason, even if they were there themselves or remember it. And for a new generation, just to know how hard times were for their older uh, generation. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I had two or three seasons myself at it. Like, and I ended up then, I said, my fate career finished in 1979. I had started teaching in my old school in Charleston. So I, I got a lot of help from a lot of people that are mentioned in the, in the article that were had a long more experience of the whole thing than me. And they were, they were very willing and generous with their time and, and their information. So I really appreciate it. The Parish Magazine really is the Parish Magazine because it's about the community and it's about the church at the heart of the community. And it's about values. It's about people coming together. It's the bank holiday weekend. And there are people who have traveled home 
uh, to be with family and they put this on their calendar for the weekend and it's a great way to get together the music the hospitality the cake the entertainment it's all class where else would you be It's almost time for us to leave Ireland West Airport. I think you will agree, folks, that's been a tremendous evening here. The communities of Kilmavi and Kilkelly came out in force for the annual magazine launch. And, of course, uh, great music from Sandy Kelly and a number of other guests here, Father James McDonough, the local parish priest, Father Sherlock, and so many more. Uh, don't forget, coming up after the break, uh, we'll be heading over to Manchester to join Martin Logan, who's out and about once again with the Irish community. There will be a repeat of this show on Saturday next at 8 o'clock and I look forward to your company next week at the same time. Now don't forget the Kilkelly Kilmerville annual magazine is on sale now and it'll make an ideal Christmas gift for anybody or our diaspora around the world. So until next week at the same time, Slonga Fall.